Hello everybody and welcome to another Nova Pans Hand Pans uh, lesson. This is frankly the second lesson in the series. Uh, we just covered how to do your touch, touch technique, i.e. how to uh, produce the best sound on the hand pan or at least uh, be able to make a sound on the hand pan. And now we're going to teach you how to apply that touch technique into playing perhaps the most important um, element of the hand pan, that, that is the scale. Okay. Now when we say the scale in music, we refer to playing all the notes of the instrument from the lowest note to the highest instrument. And um, obviously the hand pan, unlike most traditional instruments, doesn't have every single note of the piano, for example, all the white and black notes. It has a specific um, selection of those uh, notes because you can't fit all those notes on a hand pan. Some people have actually done that. They've created chromatic hand pans. They look pretty crazy. Uh, they're called mutant hand pans. Uh, you can check those out but uh, for most hand pans you're limited to well tends to be nine notes so that's why when people say oh i've got a d curd scale or i've got a, a an a aeolian scale they're actually referring to different um, arrangements of the white and black keys on the on the piano according to what the the maker could actually fit on their hand pan so what we've got here is actually a d curd I'll also mention the fact that um, this is a 432 hertz. Now, a lot of people have probably come across a 432 hertz and a 440 hertz. And to summarize, um, most of the instruments in modern day um, music making are tuned to 440 hertz. And this is just a standard tuning um, which developed, I think, outside of largely um, Germany and Vienna during the classical periods. Just basically, Europeans were using different hertz depending on um, what they thought was the official way. And um, anyway, to, to put it in a nutshell, a lot of people assume, uh, say that the 432 hertz has more spiritual uh, benefits. Uh, and it's interesting because uh, if you play a 432 hertz, which is this, and you play the 440 hertz next to it, They'd sound, they'd sound dissonant. They're not actually in the same frequency. It's referring to the frequency. So um, you'd be able to play the 440 with most other instruments in the world, but the 432 hertz is really uh, a niche tuning. However, you might notice that there's something a little more um, special about that tuning. Even as a 20-year-old you know, classical musician myself, I notice that the 432 hertz is special, and the feeling itself is not only darker because it's slightly um, it's slightly lower in tuning. I mean, it would be naive to say um, because it's lower in tuning, it feels a little darker and just just leave it at that. I mean, yeah, the lower that you get in the, in the scale, uh, the flatter you make something, it can feel a little darker. But when you play it with all the other notes, uh, it's special in itself. Um, and maybe that's because I've been playing 440 hertz instruments my whole life and now I hear a 432 one and something different, maybe. But check it out yourself, have a listen to different videos, see how the different frequencies feel to you. Anyway, we're using a 432 hertz just because uh, that's what we have here right now. And we're gonna do the scale. So most hand pans have nine notes, but it really doesn't matter if you have eight, seven, 13 notes. Uh, the scale is always gonna be bottom to top, and that's always gonna be one hand first and the other hand coming after it, straight after it. And it's always this right, left or left, right, left pattern. Um, what I will note is some hand pans, and I touched on this in the previous video, some hand pans, their third note is on the left hand side. For example, one, two, three. That's what all, our, all of our hand pans, third notes are on the left hand side. But some hand pans are made with their third note on the right. Now you might call those um, you might call those right-handed hand pans. I don't think they've got a name for them, but they are different to hand pans whose third notes are on the left. And the difference is, I'll, I'll go over it again. When you play a hand pan, um, you play like this. Okay, so if your third note is on the left, your left note, ha the left hand has to be ready to play that immediately after the second. Now, if your second note is a left hand too, you don't want to be using two at the same time because it's more effort and it, you get this crisscross, for example. If I was to say, if I was to start on the ding, the scale with my right hand, and then go second hand for the second note, and then go over here, 
I've just made that extra effort when I could have just done left, right, left, and it's so much more efficient and um, well, uh, professional as well. And we want to be professional, don't we? I mean, you can do crisscrosses if you want, but at least be comfortable doing it the natural way first. So we're going to assume that most handpans third notes here are on the left. But if your handpans third note is on the right, then just switch around the, the hand order. So with that said, we're on a left-handed handpan, right, left-handed handpan, and your third highest note is on the left. How can you check? You might be wondering, how can I check which is lower? Well, if you can't tell the difference between the first four notes and which is lower, get a uh, tuner. There's one called G-String, right, funny name, off the App Store, it's free. And you can basically uh, run that on automatic mode. Play the first four notes, maybe two or three seconds each, and see which notes pop up, okay? And you compare that to the scale which we give you, or the maker gives you on their website, and see which notes are coming first. And the order of those notes will be the order of the scale, okay? But if you can rely on your, your ear and you can tell the difference between what's high and low, perfect, you can, you can pick it up pretty quickly. So nine notes on this handpan, you would go one, two with your thumb, three, four, notice I use my thumb for two and four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay, that's a little quick, it's always left, right, left, right, so slowly, remember, tempo, a great practice to get into, habit to get into, 60 beats per minute, no, that's one beat per second, okay, Getting your hand position orders is one thing. Getting the sound of that, the notes, is another thing. So make sure, uh, if you haven't mastered the touch technique yet, go back to the first lesson, 0 0.1, lesson 0 0.1 of the previous lesson, and practice that touch technique. I know people who have purchased their hand pen months later, they're still getting this dud sound, dud, dead, muted sound. You know, it's, it's not rich sustained and that's because they just haven't practiced it or they've assumed that this is an okay sound so you want to get the habits right check out the first lesson get your touch technique sorted okay back to the scale now if you can do one two three four five six seven eight nine try to then go down eight seven six five four three so what I've done is I've gone up and then I've gone down without playing the ninth note twice. So it's really one smooth uh, movement, right, process. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now notice sometimes I use my middle finger for the, what would be the fourth note here. Sometimes I use my thumb. And that's up to you, whatever's comfortable, you can always change it later, okay? No one's gonna say, oh, you've just played this with your middle finger, you can only ever play this with your middle finger in the future, no. Whatever's comfortable. Okay, make sure all of those are at constant speed, okay? The tempo is this. scale on the handpan. If you've got a different uh, handpan, a different number of notes, for example, and you're struggling to get the hand order or the direction sorted, let us know. We can do a separate video on that. I'll help you. But that is your standard um, scale uh, and that applies to all handpans. Now if you've got, for example, this is an even number, uh, e even total number of notes on the handpan. It's nine notes. If you've got an eight note, for example, or a ten note, you're not going to end on your left note, you're going to end on your right note. So that might feel on your right hand, that might feel a little odd. If it does, um, well, you're just going to have to get used to it. Imagine this has eight notes. Five, six, seven, eight. You just go 
goes straight down. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so it really is that simple. If you've got more notes, you continue to go up using left, right, left, right, or whatever order your hand pen is. Ours is left, right, left, right, because the third note is the left hand. And um, you go down like that too. So that was an introduction onto how to play the scale on the hand pen, perhaps the most important and also basic uh, uh, skill to play in the hand pen. And it may, it may come off as boring or rudimental to you, but you, you will be surprised how effective this scale is, learning this scale is, not to just knowing the notes on the hand pen, but to uh, integrating that into your future playing. For example, I'm always playing. And that is all derived from the scale itself. So get your scale sorted, get your touch technique sorted, and we can move on to the next lesson on how to actually read um, hand pan sheet music. Okay, so we'll see you at the next lesson. Thank you.